Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's change of command ceremony between Lieutenant Colonel Russell E. Henry and Lieutenant Colonel Amy M. Corey. Special for today's for today's ceremony is Major General Darren Warner, Commanding General, Automotive and Armaments Command. My name is John Hunter, and it is my distinct pleasure to serve as the Master of Ceremonies today. Participating in today's ceremony are the Sierra Army Depot Color Guard, centered on the field, bearing the national colors and the Sierra Army Depot colors. Also joining us today are members of the 40th Infantry Division Band from the California National Guard, performing the National Anthem Harbor. We would like to welcome many distinguished guests with us today. Mr. Bruce Ross, representative for Senator Dahl. Mr. Shane Starr, representative for Congressman LaMalfa. Ms. Debbie Balsinger, and Mr. Tom Hammond, the last and, and all other flag officers, community and civic leaders, industry partners, and friends and family of Sierra Army Depot. We thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for honors, the singing of the national anthem by Ms. Amanda Harper, and the invocation given by the Joint Base Lewis McCord Installation Chaplain, Chaplain David Schofner. Today's official party consists of Major General, Commanding General, United States Army, Tank Automotive, and Armaments Command, Lieutenant Colonel Russell E. Henry, Outgoing Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Amy M. Corey, Incoming Commander,
Psalm chapter 139, King David thanks the Lord for his constant presence with him. You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I stand and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts far. You discern my going out and my lying down all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, O Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Lord, we thank you for your constant care and concern for Lieutenant Henry, Lieutenant Colonel Henry, his family, and the team here at Sierra Army Depot. Colonel Henry and his team have demonstrated a dedication during extremely difficult times that is unparalleled. Through fires and loss, pandemic and sacrifice, they have stood firm and even excelled. Thank you for his leadership, his care and concern. Thank you for his strong and supportive family. And we pray that you continue to bless them into the future as they move on to their next adventure. As Lieutenant Colonel Corey takes on the awesome task, give her strength to lead this tremendous team. Grant her and them better times. Give her an assurance that even if hard times come, that your constant presence will always be with her, this team, and her family. Bless them with your grace, your mercy, your strength and courage. We ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As a special tribute to the outgoing First Lady of Sierra Army Depot, a bouquet of red roses is being presented to Mrs. Desiree Henry by Nevaeh Green and Elizabeth Hottyshell. Red is the color of the heart and reflects the loving concern that she has shown over the past two years. The roses are symbolizing the beauty and fulfillment of her time as First Lady of the Depot. Mementos are also being presented to Lieutenant Colonel Henry's mother and father, Doug and Jackie Henry, and mother-in-law Marie. A memento is being presented to Mr. Mark Corey, husband of Lieutenant Colonel Amy Corey by Ariana McMakin and Abriana Amade. The memento symbolizes Mr. Corey's commitment to Sierra Army Depot during Lieutenant Colonel Corey's tenure. Mementos are also being presented to Lieutenant Colonel Corey's children, Katie and Seth, as well as her mother and father, Aaron and Nancy Hughes. of our armed forces began more than 200 years ago when citizens joined together in a common cause, the quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The change of command is a time to honor part of that tradition by formally restating the authority of command. The change of command is a transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one commander to another. The change of command is a simple, traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his or her responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The passing of the transfer of command responsibility from the old commander to the new. The passing of the demonstrates to the soldiers of the unit that the old commander has passed the mantle of leadership and with this also passes the loyalty of the soldiers to their new commander. 
At this time, the official party will take their positions on the field for the passing of the colors. By the authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, Army Command Policy, the undersigned assumes command of Sierra Army Depot, effective 20 July 2021, signed Amy Corey, Lieutenant Colonel, Logistics, Command. Commanding General of TACOM, Major General Darren Werner. Yeah, all right, there we go. We got some, got some response out of you all. How's everybody? Good. All right, it's great to be in Herlong, California today. Look at the beautiful sunshine and the warm day, nice cool breeze. What a great place, right? So um, I, I just want to thank everybody uh, who's come out today uh, in, in I really appreciate the effort that's been put out by the team here at Sierra, uh, especially our, our um, individuals that are part of the Color Guard, as well as the band, uh, and Amy, uh, what a great rendition. I don't know where you slipped off to, what a great rendition of the National Anthem. Let's give them, there she is. Let's give them all a round of applause. Visitors, Mr. Shane Starr representing Congressman Doug Love Malfa's office, Ms. Debbie Balsinger from uh, representing Congressman Mark Amade's office, and Mr. Bruce Ross representing California State Senator Brian Dahl. Uh, thank you all for your continued support, uh, your, your efforts, your uh, congressional members' efforts, and uh, ensure uh, Sierra Army Depot is, is acknowledged and recognized as an incredibly important our Army's security, our Army's ability to deliver readiness. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. To my fellow soldiers, members of the Senior Executive Service, family and friends, again, thank you for joining us and taking time to be here today. And to those who work so hard, uh, I can't uh, say it enough. I know it took a lot of time and court Russell family for Amy and, and uh, Russ Jr. And, and Robbie and Ryan. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Prior to this, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Colonel Henry's family. Uh, it was a great pleasure to meet you. Uh, in, 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 the, in the acknowledgement of the individuals in the room, I realized that among the crowd of, of supporters that Russ Henry has, his dad, Doug Henry, is a, a veteran of the Vietnam War. And uh, I, I don't ever take it lightly. Uh, as a soldier who served over 36 years, I acknowledge the fact that in every war that I uh, participated in, every time I deployed and returned, there was a crowd of people, there were parades, there were uh, pats on the back, there was applause. Uh, and, and that didn't happen for our Vietnam vets. Uh, in, in not too long ago, President Obama uh, made a declaration and signed an executive order that recognized our Vietnam veterans. Uh, and he, he did that, and in, in that action, he uh, designed, had designed a pin that you wear in your lapel. The lapel pin is a, is a eagle um, that is encircled by a blue ribbon. And it says, uh, veteran of the, uh, the Vietnam uh, era. Uh, I'd like to present that pin to you uh, so you can wear it proudly. Uh, please, Mr. Uh, Henry, please join me up here.
I don't I see that I don't ask if you're being on service veterans. That you take the time to, to recognize your great service. Thank you, sir. I also want to thank Colonel Schaffner, our chaplain. Colonel Schaffner came in from JBLM. He's the installation chaplain, officer of JBLM. I talked to him earlier. It's great to have him come in and preside over this for us. As we don't have a chaplain on the ground here, uh, having a great teammate come in this. Sir, thanks for joining us today. Uh, and thanks for your inspirational invitation. And for encouraging for joining us today. Uh, and thanks for your inspirational invitation. And encouraging for us. Uh, I mentioned Amanda before I paused also recognized by the train. We did that great recognition. Also recognized by the as a 2020 emerging training leader. Uh, so we're, we're, we're real proud of you, Amanda. Thank you for what you do. Additionally, I'd like to thank the entire Sierra Army Depot team and the world class support you deliver every day in support of our nation's warfighters. You are consummate professionals that provide critical support, readiness, and sustainment to the men and women who serve our great nation. These soldiers depend on your dedication to ensure they have the tools and equipment they need to defend the United States and its allies. Our warfighters succeed because of your success here at Sierra. Thank you for your service and your dedication to our great nation. Two, two years ago, Lieutenant Colonel Russ Henry took command of Sierra Army Depot. He has worked incredibly hard to bring the workforce together as a highly specialized team of more than 1,300 soldiers, civilians, and contractors, balancing a budget of nearly a quarter of a billion dollars. Under his leadership, Sierra has been able to sustain a performance to promise of above 99%. What that means is 99% of the time, Sierra did exactly what they said they were going to do. Wouldn't that be great if everybody could have that reputation? But Sierra has that reputation. 99% of the time, if they say they're going to do it, they deliver. He and his team responded to and executed rapidly developing changing efforts to support the Army's response to the COVID-19 pan pandemic. To include establishing and operating the COVID-19 Personal Protective Equipment Storage and Distribution Center. And I'll tell you, that was a challenge. Under my first the stuff that we were, you know, if you recall a few, you know, about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, uh, how we, we didn't have protective masks, we didn't have, you know, there was, there was challenges all across our country. And Sierra served as the center of gravity to receive from all of the different materials that could be packaged up and then sent out to be used by our military, but uh, our partners in, in the Army. And they did an incredible job. As part of these efforts, the team received more than 15 million COVID-19 tests and collection kits and vaccine sets. They shipped more than 600,000 of them to 35 military treatment facilities and over 300 shipments. You and your team have done outstanding work during this time, an unprecedented crisis to our nation, while helping sustain our Army's readiness. Through the AJ-1 supply support activity, Russ and the team almost $590 million worth of serviceable items, good stuff, that was excess out across the country. They took that, and turned it back, they brought it back into Sierra, and then filled requisitions from around the Army. So we took $590 million worth of good materials that was going to waste across the Army and shipped it out uh, for more than $330 million of assets that went back out to the field. What a huge uh, savings that was for our Army in delivering back to the Army forces uh, with, when that very well could have gone to waste. So the impact that we had on non-mission capable supply back orders and reducing shipping times across all issue program groups had a huge impact on readiness for our Army. You oversaw a parts pull program that harvested more than 7,500 parts from 15 individual fleets, saving the Army an estimated $90 million and completed more than 650,000 shipments of critical repair parts to 26 countries and delivering $330 million of material readiness to the U.S. Army. So these pieces of equipment that you see here, Sierra is the end of First Life Center. It delivers parts to the active Army around the world 
off these old hulks that are out in the Sierra storage facilities so that the, the new equipment that's out in the hands of the soldiers can be operational. Uh, they do an incredible job here. Uh, without them, uh, our readiness in our Army would not be where it is. And we can contribute some of that readiness to what the work that they do out here. The team also expedited petroleum and water system programs to improve support during critical Army shortages. They also achieved a continuous process improvement financial goal of $7.4 million in proven cost savings. If you get in the picture, uh, Russ and his team here have, have really dug in. And they're not just saying, they're just not using words. They're actually doing. The results that they are executing here at Sierra are providing a com uh, considerable impact in, in, in material and dollars back into our, into our Army. Um, for those of you that work here every day, it's just another day. But for the Army, it's an incredibly important part of what we need. These are just some of the examples of the outstanding work that Lieutenant Colonel Henry team to accomplish. It would take us some time to go over them all. Russell, you and the team deserve my heart congratulations for all the hard work you have accomplished in the last two years uh, during your tenure here. The team has received recognition under the following awards programs. Now these, all these award, awards programs I'm going to mention are all at the, in the Department of Defense and the Army. The Sierra Army team uh, was the recipient of the Lean Excellence Award Program. The finest Lean Six Sigma continuous process improvement program in TACOM for sure. I would say definitely within Army Material Command. And then I would say probably within the Department of Def Defense, one of the top two or three. Uh, they've also received the Army Maintenance Award for Excellence, Staff of the Army. The Army Safety Award Program at the battalion level from the Chief of Staff of the Army. And the 2021 Army Material Command Fire Department of the Year. Across this installation, everywhere you look, you see excellence. A commitment to excellence that's no, unlike. It has been a complete, uh, Russell has recently come to my attention that you refer to Sierra as the gold mine because of the value of the soldiers, the civilians and the contractors, and their skill sets to the Sierra mission and what they contribute to overall Army readiness. And I'd agree with you. What we have here is a gold mine. Mr. Bo Bill Rowland shared a story about a team building exercise you held shortly after you took over. And it's a demonstration of who Colonel Henry is and the leadership that he, he brought into this organization. So Russell organized this offsite, and it was a battle, if you will, involving blindfolds, trash cans, plastic balls, and goalies. It was amazing to hear about what began as a friendly team building uh, exercise that eventually turned into an all-out competition. As Bill recalls during the fun, you became more motivated, louder, and there was more of an urgency and determination for your side to prevail. The competition is a great motivating factor. Competition is a good motivating endeavor, but something Bill remembers about the event is that it, should, it showed him a lot about your character, the way you tackled that challenge in the same way he saw you tackle the mission here at Sierra. He saw that as one of Sierra's newest team members, you identified Sierra's mission set, a set of goals, and, and you led and motivated a team and achieved exactly what you set out to do. This team is truly better off because of your leadership, and you are right. It is a gold mine. So for you, Russell, we, we are really proud of soldier at Sierra Army Depot, Lieutenant Colonel Henry, who goes off to Fort Knox. Russell is off to Human Resources Command to take on an incredible, incredibly important mission to oversee the assignment of Army logisticians. Don't forget to take off. As you assign your, your officers across the, uh, across the uh, Army, remember to take off and all the different organizations inside of Army Material Command uh, because we'll, we'll be looking for those good soldiers coming our way. We wish you and Desiree and your sons the very best as you embark on your next chapter and, and hope your new team quickly realizes the asset they're gaining, field tested and 
very, very capable leader who's a little bit competitive. So when the Army takes a good leader from an organization, they strive to send another one right in behind. And we don't ever have that problem in, in take home. Uh, we get the best of the best. We're look, we were looking for a, a leader with outstanding skills, experience, and leadership qualities, and they delivered. Lieutenant Colonel Amy Corey comes to Sierra with an impressive track record. She graduated from the College of the Ozarks in 2003 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Medical Service Corps and later transitioned to the York Ordnance Corps. Prior to assignment to Sierra, she was the commander of the student detachment for the Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. She has four deployments under her belt with two tours to Operation Iraqi Freedom, one to Operation New Dawn in Kuwait, and one to Kosovo. Along with all her service medals, Amy has also earned the recruiter's badge, which is an incredible accomplishment in and of itself, the parachutist badge, and completed the jump master course in 2017. Lieutenant Colonel Corey, you have my confidence. And you take command of the Sierra team today. I know that you will guide this team successfully, setting ambitious goals to keep our warfighters equipped and adapt to new challenges and obstacles as they arise. And there will be many, whether it's a fire or uh, a challenge on the installation, uh, they will come up and uh, you, I'm confident you'll be able to handle them. With your expertise, I trust that you'll understand the needs of your soldiers, of our soldiers, and do what is necessary to support the Army's mission. I know that the Sierra Army Depot family has already embraced you and your family as one of their own. And welcome to you, your husband Mark, and your two children, Catherine and Seth. We welcome you to the TACOM team, the Sierra Army Depot team, and we're very thankful that we can make a transition from Russ Henry to Amy Corey and move our organization forward. I want to thank everybody again for joining us today. It's an honor to be here, to be part of this, uh, and we wish you all the very best as the day goes on. Thank you very much. Army Depot, Lieutenant Colonel Russell E. Henry. It's hot out here. So the sun's bright. So if I get a little teary eyed, the sun is bright. General Warner this morning said at 07 when we were re rehearsing, he said, Russ, this is the right time to have a change of command. At zero seven, because it was nice and cool and the sun was not not too hot. Um, but Major General Warner, thank you for fighting over this ceremony, sir. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for those very generous words. So it's hard to put into words how grateful I am and to have had this opportunity to serve as the commander of Sierra Armored Depot. Uh, incredible opportunity. I'm truly humbled and privileged to have been in this opportunity. Command Sergeant Major Charles, appreciate your leadership, uh, your support, and of course your mentorship, the backbone of the Army. Ms. Wicked Sky, I think you're out there somewhere. Uh, we appreciate your support and your, your leadership. There you are. I uh, appreciate you being here and support. Uh, Mr. Bruce Ross, Ms. Ms. Debbie Bolzinger, Mr. Shane Starr, and Mr. Tom Hammond, we appreciate your support and advocacy. Uh, for Sierra Army Depot, we appreciate you being here uh, with us. Distinguished guests, family, and friends of Sierra Army Depot, thank you all for being in attendance at this change of command ceremony. To the band, you sound great. We, thank you. we appreciate you being here. To the color guard, move the knees just a little bit. bit. Amanda Harper, thanks for the beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. Amanda's an amazing person, an amazing leader, an amazing singer. John Hunter, appreciate all that you do. Of course, as the Master of Ceremony, the Continent Professional, uh, appreciate you um, and all that you do. Melissa Olinger, who's responsible for planning this entire change of command ceremony, has been running around crazy for the last uh, week plus, and, and certainly today, appreciate what you do. And of course, 
uh, Ms. Gary Reed and her support of our transition and all that she does in, in supporting me and, and my nuances. I can be a little particular uh, at times. Of course, Mr. Don Olson, Deputy to the Commander, Standard Bearer for the Depot. Six change of command as the Deputy to the Commander. Six change of commands while he was an Army officer in uniform, and now six um, as the Deputy to the Commander. There's nobody that cares more about this Depot than Mr. Don Olson. There's nobody that's invested more in this Depot than Mr. Don Olson. Um, he has ensured my success as a commander. He's ensured our success um, as a depot and as an organization. Thank you, Don. Uh, well done. Give Mr. Don Olson a round of applause. I'm very fortunate today to have a lot of family and friends here. Um, so I do want to take this a minute to recognize that whole room of, of family and friends. And sir, thank you so much for recognizing my father in mean, his service in, in, in the Vietnam War. First and foremost, my beautiful bride of 24 years, Desiree, thank you for your continued love and support of me and our three Hoogland Henry boys <laughs> sitting there. Um, even though you think that I'm married to the Army, um, and, and I kind of am, um, I still love you more. Thank you. <laughs> Three boys, two are here today. Uh, one is on the path to becoming an Army officer, currently at Fort Knox. I'm very proud of him. My old son, Russ Jr., is here. Um, he is wearing his red, white, and blue socks, if you haven't seen him. Nice and fancy. And, uh, he'll stick around here in Reno. He's an operations manager for, for Amazon, and he'll continue to do good things. And, of course, my youngest son is going with us to Fort Knox, and the football coach can't wait. And, uh, so, so we'll, we'll take him, not, not anything necessary yet, uh, but I appreciate my boys, I love them tremendously. Um, to my parents, the absolute best parents in the world, unwavering support, unconditional love, I certainly wouldn't be here um, without you. Um, to my big brother, he's down there, uh, he's better looking than I am. Um, thank you and Nancy um, for your love and support. You always seem to come through in, in time of need. I don't know what it is, but I, but I appreciate you. More you realize, and thank you for, for your love and support. Of course, uh, my wife family is here today, my family too. Uh, Desiree's parents, uh, mother in law could not make it this morning, was feeling ill. The father in law is here, 93 years old and going strong. Uh, <laughs> and, and then, of course, uh, brother and sister in law, uh, Big Rock and Melissa Thomas over there, all the way from Roanoke, West Virginia. That was an inside joke. Roanoke. Brother Virginia, I'm going to decide to. And their boys, uh, Rock and, and Dominic. I appreciate my family being here. So now to Sierra Depot, Team Sierra. It was an absolute privilege to serve as your 42nd commander. Sierra Depot has the longest team legacy, and for Desiree and I to be a part of that, it's an absolute, absolute uh, honor and truly humbling. You know, I was talking with the Chief of Staff, Mr. Eric Manor. He thought I was going to forget him who's retiring at the end of this month after 40 years of service. Um, give him a round of applause. <laughs> the chief of staff and the chief of staff here for 12 years. But I was talking with Mr. Manor on how I would open this change of command speech. And we talked about it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. So for those of you that have read The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, and for those of you who understand Eric Manor's story and other survivors here on the depot in the last couple of years, you'll know where that, that notion comes from. But if you think about it, if you think about the tragedy, the loss, the hardship, the challenges over the last two years, at least in my tenure here, maybe the worst of times, but think about the goodness, the strength, the genuine care for each other, the success of our people and the accomplishments of this organization may be the best of times. I could go down a list of accolades, much of what Major General Werner shared with us, and the billions and billions of dollars of value back to the Army and Army, Army readiness. It's absolutely incredible what Sierra Army Depot has done and will continue to do. That is worthy of celebration. So two chief teams Sierra. Sierra 
Army Depot, do not ever forget the importance of our mission here at the U.S. Army's premier facility dedicated to regeneration, utilization, storage, and redistribution of the Army's Inner First Life Center. And never underestimate your vital role in delivering Army readiness now and into the future. It's all about strategic readiness and support of our soldiers. You have done everything that I've asked you to do and you've done it well. I'm extremely, extremely proud of this organization. I'm ex proud of this organization, how we came together in times of tragedy and loss, how we lifted each other up, and how we continued to ex successfully accomplish the mission. Well done. I truly believe, and I might be a little bit biased, but I truly believe the United States Army and our Joint Force is the strength of this nation. And Sierra Army Depot, you are a critical, critical part of that. With the longest, the value to history since 1942, Sierra Depot's most critical assets have and always will be our people, our dedicated workforce, our community, and of course our, our teammates and our families, all who are extremely important part of Team Sierra. As the president and I get ready to embark on our next adventure uh, to Human Resources Command at Fort Knox, where they say all the gold is at Fort Knox. However, the real gold is right here. As Major General Porter mentioned, the gold line is here, and the gold is, is our people. There's just a few more folks I want to mention in, in, in groups, and I want to thank, thank the senior leaders here at Sierra Depot, our managers, directors, our division chiefs, much that are here. We have about the depot, representing the depot here, and much of that is, is our, our senior leaders. But there are a few other folks that I want to mention who I will never forget, just like you, that I will never forget. Mr. Jim Marcotte, and Mr. Carl Oaks, who lost us last year to COVID-19. Each of us can remember them, and each of us can find something in them. They live a life of service, although cut short. So I ask that you continue that legacy and that service, as I, as I know you will. Thank you again, Team Sierra, for all that you've done. Your service to our country, your service to our Army, and your service to each other. Team Sierra, we welcome and embrace Lieutenant Colonel Amy Corey. Her resume, as you heard, far exceeds mine. She is absolutely the right person at the right time for this job, to take the mantle of leadership and command of this, this organization. We welcome the, the Corey family and, of course, Lieutenant Colonel Amy Corey. Major General Warrior in closing, and Command Sergeant Major Charles in closing. Thank you again. So there's no question that Team Sierra will not let you down and will not let our Army down. My, fam my family and I are truly honored to be part of this team forever. I thank God for this incredible opportunity every day, and I thank God for our continued blessings. Major General Warner, Command Sergeant Major Charles, Mr. Bruce Ross, Mr. Shane Starr, Ms. Debbie Balsinger, Mr. Tom Hammond, the Sierra Army Depot team, distinguished guests, family, and friends. Good morning and thank you for attending today's ceremony. First, I would like to thank my family for their unconditional love and support, without which this milestone would not have been possible. Mark, You've always encouraged me to follow my passion, and you've willingly given so much of yourself to our Army family over the past 18 years. I'm excited to share this amazing opportunity with you, and I love the man, husband, and father that you are for each of us every day. Katie and Seth, I love you with all of my heart. Thank you for always choosing to look upon these transitions as adventures worth taking even though it means saying goodbye to your friends and everything that's familiar. I have no doubt we will make wonderful memories here. Mom, Dad, it means so much to me that you're here with us today to share on this occasion. You gave me exactly what I needed to find my way in this world, and I dearly love this life that I've been given. 
Thank you for your unwavering support through multiple moves and many deployments and for celebrating our Army family and all of the sacrifices. I've been fortunate to serve with many talented soldiers, NCOs, officers, and civilians over the course of my career. But I would like to thank three in individuals in particular that have had a significant impact on my career. First, Colonel Retired Catherine Graff, thank you for tolerating my inquisitive nature as a young lieutenant, always making time for me, no matter how exhaustive the day. I also want to thank you for being extremely dissatisfied with my long-term plan, which at the time did not include a career in the U.S. Army. I'm standing here today because you saw potential in me that I did not see in myself. Colonel Lahavi Brunson, truly the highlight of my career up to this point was serving under your command. You got me with five jumps to my name and gave me every opportunity to excel as an airborne leader. I will never forget the number one rule and count myself privileged for your continued mentorship and friendship. We will be thinking of your family tomorrow and wish Colonel Tavi Brunson the very best in his command. And to the family of Colonel Scott Green, I miss him terribly and treasure all of my memories of his enthusiastic and exceptional leadership. I will never forget him and I will do my part to honor his legacy every day. Major General Warner, I am humbled to have this opportunity to command Sierra Army Depot and look forward to working closely with you and the TACOM team. Lieutenant Colonel Henry, the hospitality that you and Desiree have shown in my family has been truly remarkable. Your passion for Sierra Army Depot and its mission is palpable. Thank you for everything you have done to assist us through this transition. And I hope you and your family enjoy Kentucky and that you make many wonderful new friends and memories while you are there. And finally to the Sierra Army Depot team, I have been nothing but impressed by your skill, commitment, and passion for the work that you do every day. You are an integral part of the U.S. Army's strategic readiness and I am privileged to share in Sierra's rich history and promising future alongside of you and I do not take lightly that which I have been entrusted. Thank you all. Sierra Strong, Army Strong. Ma'am, permission to retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the play of the Army song and remain standing for the retiring of the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our change of command ceremony. Lieutenant Colonel Henry will be in front for those of you that wish to say farewell. Invited guests are reminded of the reception located at the Skedaddle Inn. Please drive safely to your destination.